Hi, it's T with T Quilts, and I'm here because on March 20th, my first Benner Tech quarterly pack arrived, and so I thought I would do an opening with you. I did slit the pack open, but I haven't opened the package to see what fabric collection I have. So in the packet, I have the Benner Tech's newsletter, and it's called the Fat Quarterly. It says Benetech's Fabric for Quilters by Quilters. And the fabric collection that it looks like we're going to get this month is New Traditions. Enhanced with Metallic Gold by Canvas Studio. And so here are some of the fabric collections. And then they give you some project ideas here. As well as on the back cover, there are some project ideas. So I haven't read the newsletter yet. Um, so I will do that. But I can see here that they've got a stop to shop where each issue they're featuring quilt shops that carry Benetech fabric. And they're saying to put these shops on your to-do list when you travel or visit their websites to do a little online shopping. So I will read that to see if I want to do one of those projects. And then they've got a piece of paper in here saying that these back issues are still available. And it looks like all of the back issues are $6 each if you're interested in any of that. I will not be ordering any back issues. And in addition, I also have this Mr. B's Fabric Club preview pack pen that I mentioned to you in the initial video about when I signed up before I had received one of these pens. And then the fabric collection itself is in a bag and they are pre-cut 5x5 five five squares. So let's get a look at some of these close up. Ooh, they're beautiful. I love the metallic hint in them. I'm going to zoom in so you can see some of the fabric for those that don't have the collection. So it looks like I've got two of every piece of fabric here. Oh, butterflies. It's pretty. So that's that stack. Gorgeous butterflies. Oh, that's pretty too. Okay, so those are the fabrics in the collection. I will determine what I'm going to make and then I will come back and let you see my progress. I'm back and I have chosen to do this window pane design that's located on the bottom of the newsletter on page five. Actually, both of these patterns on the bottom of page five are actual download patterns from the Benertex website. They're free of charge and I have my printed pattern here and when I was reading the instructions I noticed that the black squares that are dominant throughout this design they have eight of them the actual size is cut to 11 and one half so I don't have 11 and a half inch fabric because all I have is my pack and I'm not going to buy any additional fabric so what I'm going to do is cut my squares into four and one half inch squares so I have chosen eight dark squares and I have them on my cutting board and I am going to trim them down to four and one half inch squares. Remember when I was talking about in other videos when you don't have 
what a particular project is asking you to do then just do and use whatever you already have in your stash instead of completely you know starting from scratch by going to buy fabric that you need that they're suggesting that you use so that's four of my squares cut that are dark and so here are my remaining four and in the pattern they use they didn't use eight different fabrics but since I'm just using a little sample kit I don't really care so I'm going to go ahead and make mine scrappy so I have my four stacked and again I'm going to cut this into four and one half inches rotate my board around my board does completely rotate around instead of me having to turn the board but with me being on my long arm table I don't have enough room here okay so now I have eight four and one half inch squares and then I also need to put flip corners onto three sides of the squares and that's noted here in the pattern so if i have eight blocks and i need to do this three times so eight times three is 24 so i have six of these squares here that i'm going to cut into four pieces so i'm going to make sure that these are first five inch squares so i'll just start with three because you know pre-cuts, sometimes they vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. So the first thing I want to do is measure to see if these are exactly 5 inches from edge to edge. And they are just a tad bigger. I see things sticking out around the edge of my squares. So I'm just going to go in here and do a little quick square up. And because those things are so little... I am just going to rotate them. So now I just want you to see how much I've trimmed off. But sometimes that can make a big difference when you're making your quilt. So now I am going to just go ahead and cut this into two and one half inch. So now I got two pieces, and when I rotate one quarter turn and cut two and one half again, then I'll have my squares. So now I need to do that one more time with the remaining three squares. So now the next thing I want to do is take my sandboard and a ruler and draw a line diagonally through the block. And I want to do that on the wrong side of the fabric. And since I'm going to save my remaining half square triangles because I can use those in a spare project somewhere else or I can use them in a border if I like I'm going to go ahead and draw an additional line that I'm going to sew on so I will do this to all 26 of the light two and one half inch squares that I just cut I want to show you the next step I have put this onto two opposing corners and I have that second line it's on the outside so I want to make sure that the this drawn line is not on the inside so I want to stitch from corner to corner and then I'm also going to stitch on this line as well and then I'm going to cut in between these two seams and then you'll be folding those back so I'm going to do that to all of my squares and then I will come back and show you the next step so I have taken all of my eight squares and I have sewn flip squares on 
two opposite corners and I just did that because it could go really quick and then I just finger pressed I have not used an iron at this point I um, just finger pressed them open and then what I want to do is lay out all eight of my blocks so that I can add my final corner onto my blocks and I don't have to worry about repeating any of the fabrics in any particular block. So now I will add the final flip square onto my unit and I can sew all of those together and then I will come back. And in addition, while I was sewing these flip squares, remember we had two lines drawn. I had the line drawn down the center, which is the only line that I needed. But I also went ahead and sewed a half inch away with a second line. And now I've got these bonus half square triangles that are now made from me doing that. On my design wall, and I have my eight units. I've pressed them with an iron. And now I just need to turn them and place them into the positions that I want to sew them in. So I'm going to go ahead and sew these units together. They do not have any sashing in between them. I'm going to go and sew these into one row, a second row, and then I will sew the two rows together down the middle and I'll come back and show you my results. have my mini quilt sewn and so I have gone and taken out five more squares here And in addition to that, I am going to use some of my half square triangles that I made in my corners. So I'm just putting up a few. I'm not going to put them all up. And the only fabric that I'm adding is for my stash. I searched my stash and I happen to have this print. See if I can put it on the side here. So it looks like it looks pretty good with this collection. So that's what I'm going to do. I don't know my sizes yet, but I think I'm going to do everything in one and a half inch size. Or maybe I can do everything in one and three quarters because I may can square these up to one and three quarters. So I'm going to put a one and a quarter finish so I'm going to cut one and three quarter border around this center and then I'm going to cut these light squares that I have on the board into one and three quarter strips and then I'm going to just piece those around in a second border and then my third border will be another cut of this at one and three quarters so that's what I'm going to work on so I'm going to go cut my pieces and I'll get the first border on and then I will show you my next step I'm back with quite a bit on my design wall I decided to go ahead and cut everything that I needed for my quilt top except for the binding and backing of course but I wanted to show you what I have on my design wall and just recap really quickly what I've already cut for the squares where I've used the black background fabrics, I cut eight squares, four and one half inches square. And then I took six of my light five inch squares and cut them into 24 two and one half inch squares. So that is my center here. Now I'm working on my borders that are going around. And my borders is really simpler than it looks, but it is. A tad bit complicated if you're just looking at it but let me break it down so then I decided I wanted to use my leftover 
half square triangles. So that's what these are. When I sold these, they were one and three quarters inches square. So then I decided to cut my border strips one and three quarter inches as well so that they would match my half square triangles. So I've cut one and three quarter inches by 16 and one half inch. And then I cut four of my light pieces into one and three quarter inches by four and a half because I wanted them to line up with the blocks when they were pieced. And then over here I have an oversized piece that I cut three inches by one and three quarters. Now remember, you you don't have to do what I'm doing. I'm actually off the pattern at this point. So I'm just showing you what's on my design wall. I really don't want to do a whole pattern for this because there is a pattern already available. But this is what I was saying when I was doing my twirling string so along how you can take a pattern and then make it your own. You can you don't have to do everything that's written inside the pattern. So what I want to do is sew all four of these together and then sew my two border strips on either side of that. And then when you've got that piece, you'll have something that looks like this. So you want to do that to both sides of your block. And then you also want to do the same thing to your top and bottom. You want to sew these two pieces together and then sew these strips on either side. So I am going to go sew all of these strip sets together and then I'm also going to go ahead and sew the side strip sets onto my center and then I will come back. I'm back and I've sewn my side border panels to my quilt top and now I want to work on these nine patch blocks, the shoe fly blocks here. I want to sew those together, sew a strip on the side and a strip on the bottom. And then once that's sewn, I'm going to sew that to each side of my top and bottom border strips. Once all of that is completed, then I'm going to sew that entire thing to the top and bottom of my quilt. So I'm going to do all of this sewing and then I will come back and show you my final quilt top. So here's my completed top. I just wanted to show it to you. I will not probably get it quilted because I have another quilt on my long arm frame right now. So this is what I came out with. I will measure this quilt and I will give you my finished measurements in the overlay. So thank you for watching. I hope you like this project. I hope you like the Benetex fabric pack and I will see you in my next video. Bye bye. Thank you.